Throughout the year, the animals worked even harder than they had worked in the previous year. To rebuild the windmill with walls twice as thick as before and to finish it by the appointed date. Together with the regular work of the farm, with a tremendous labor. There were times when it seemed to the animals that they worked longer hours and fed no better than they had done before, before in the Joneses' days. On Sunday mornings, Squealer holding down a long strip of paper with his trotter would read out to them lists of figures providing that production of every class of foodstuff had increased by 200%, 300%, and 500% as the case might have been. The animals saw no reason to disbelieve him, especially as they could no longer remember very clearly what conditions had been like before the rebellion. All the same, there were days when they felt that they would sooner have less figures and more food. <sighs> Fucking animal farm. What's all well talking about? My name is Marcus Conti reporting. Raining here in New York. Got my mother's umbrella out. <laughs> so, um... So I went to this, um, I went to this debate last night, right? And I'm not going to use their names because, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's Congress, November 6th, of course, is the fucking election. We all know that, right? But on, um, here in New York, there's a race going on. There's the incumbent Republican running against the insurgent Democrat. And as usual, as a Green Party candidate with, you know, less than zero percent chance of actually winning. Sitting up there, at least they gave him his, uh, they gave him a seat at the table, which was interesting. So I went to this debate and I was ready to, and I've interviewed all the players so far. And, um... And it's not a local issue. I talk about it because it's it's a race for the House of Representatives, right? Which is the case across the country right now. So I went to this debate and I was I was saying to myself, "Oh, what's, you know, I'm always looking for the story. What's the story? Oh, I'm going to You know, maybe I should ambush the, you know, ambush the candidate and ask him a tricky question." Right, and and I got there, and it just it all seemed like it seemed senseless to even be there, right? And because I make these videos, people know who I am, you know, and I get comments. Don't make a ruckus. Don't make a fool of yourself. <laughs> That's what people say. <laughs> And other people, the politicians, look at me like they're afraid that I'm going to ambush them, you know? Well, that just comes with the territory, right? That's, that's not the point. Um, but but what, what I was looking for was, I was looking for the story in the candidates. And all I heard was the usual rhetoric. The, dem, the guy with the D after his name was talking about how bad Trump was and how great the Democrats are and the need for, you know, political reform and get money out of politics. They say all the right things, but they have no solution to doing it, right? The very guy that's saying get money out of politics takes $2 million from, you know, corporate interests in the pharmaceutical industry. One of the funniest reactions was when the Republican was asked a question about does money affect decisions in politics? And he said, he, he, he kind of shrugged it off and said, 
Well, it depends on the person. And fucking, you know, even a room of sheep. You know, 300 people in the room of sheep <coughs> had a laugh at that one. So. But what is the story? What is the story? Who is the useful idiot? Right? That's what I wanted to talk about. The the. It's been an interesting week because... This term is kind of interesting. I want to keep flushing it out a little bit. Which is, uh, what is the useful idiot? Who is the useful idiot? Is the politician the useful idiot to get the... Is he someone's useful idiot? Yeah. He's the useful idiot of the corporations. In a sense. Right? He's doing the bidding of the corporations... And what does he compromise? Well, he compromises his his dignity, his his career pursuit, his his morality in many senses, because he knows full well that his efforts have little, if any, effect or benefit to the regular people. But the real useful idiots are the are the contestants in the audience. The, the, the quote voters never did a question come up about voter integrity does your vote count voter suppression none of that ever comes up they talk about money and politics but they never lead to the solution of the laws the citizens united and they don't talk about it but all along right in that, in that fight, right, in that fight of Democrat-Republican with the one green guy in, in between who no one really believes could win and, quite frankly, isn't the best candidate, best spokesperson, best salesman for the idea. Oops. <laughs> the green guy has all the right answers. Right? Get money out of politics. Raise the raise raise taxes on the rich. That's where the money is. A Green New Deal for America. Solar, wind, right? The question is why is the guy the green guy able to see it all and speak about it all? without any restraint and without any hesitation and any disability to put his finger on the problem. Why is that guy able to do it? And the Republican and the Democrat adamantly oppose or refuse to talk about it. Why is that? It's the money. It's the money in politics. That's the reason. Because the green guy is not has no donors. He even said it. I, I, got, I, I took the money out of my pocket to do this. Right? It's the money in politics that changes the opinion. But when the green guy speaks and says, raise the corporate tax rate to 90%, I was the only one clapping out of 350 people. When he says single payer universal health care, fucking room is silent. I was the only one clapping. Right? I was all by myself. Right? But then when he says, he says, then when, when the Democrat says, and I will defend uh, uh, pre existing conditions, <laughs> the fucking room roars and and, and claps and all the sheep are, you know, it's just, it's one of the most bizarre mind fucks that you, that, that I saw. And I was looking, like, again, I was looking for the story in the contestant, in the, in the, um, I was looking for the, for the story in the audience, in the, uh, candidates. 
but I found the story in the in the in the audience. You see, the audience, as George Orwell just told us, that we will work harder. That although the figures add up, the Republican rattled off unemployment numbers are the lowest they've ever been. Jobs, jobs, jobs. He even went as far as to say that <laughs> corporations like Google and Apple came to Congress because they have so many jobs they can't fill them. <laughs> right? That's the that's the um, that's the the you know the 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 figures you know right that they don't add up that all the people really want is they'd settle for just a little bit more food, a little bit more substance in their life, and they can't remember what things were like beforehand because they're overworked. See, the people become the useful idiots. It's the people that go along and get strung along for so long by the leaders who are sold out years ago. They don't even know what you're talking about anymore. To them, it's just a game. It's just a... Um, it's just a game, you know? Vicious cycle, right? It's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle of politics, of... When we realize we're the useful idiot, when do we realize, if at all, do we do we realize that we're being the useful idiot and how do we how do we break that cycle my name is Marcus Conti reporting